Good morning. You are listening to the Leadership Doc on Talking Leadership. I'm your host, Dr. Heather Williamson, and I am hopefully you're up and bright and early because, yes, it is early this morning, but I have an amazing guest with me today. His name is Michael Feebleman, and he is the owner of Second Life Incorporated. And so I really wanted to bring Michael on. He was a recommendation from a really good friend of mine who is amazing. Um, and I really wanted to have him share a little bit about what he's doing within his business and how he is helping mentor and uh, with mentor his employees with regard to personal development and other things, I guess, which, which we'll talk about. So, Michael, thank you very much for being here. Thanks for having me today. Yeah, That's great. So why don't you share a little bit about what your company is about and, and how you help others? Sure. So a little background. I've been in technology for over 30 years. And the most interesting point of where we are today is technology for maybe 100% or 90% of the people dominates their life. Yeah. But with schools, corporations, or government facilities, what do you do with all the old technology? I mean, does it end up in a landfill like the consumer returns from my big retailers? Does mm -hmm. it end up in other people's hands and so on? So we're kind of a company that makes the big corporations compliant. So we go in and we work with um, companies all over the state, Richmond and the United States, and take their so-called EOL, obsolete uh, end-of-life technology, mm -hmm. and we bring it in. We do a number of things such as inventorying the technology, uh, cleaning it, wiping the data to DOD standards. So that's the real important yeah, secret that sauce. Is, yeah, that's really important. DOD so, is not one you mess around with. Right. Well, <laughs> you want to stay on the good side, right? Yeah. So we wipe everything to a three-pass wipe unless uh, a facility says, look, we really want seven pass. And in some instances, they ask us to crush the hard drives with a video mm -hmm. so they can see that. But before we do that, we take all the serial numbers for the hard drives and so on. Mm -hmm. So they have all mm -hmm. the particular data they need to answer to their bosses and such. Mm -hmm. And so when you <clears throat> scrub all the 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 database, basically, on the on these devices, then what do you do with them? Sure. So once it goes through our process, so an example right now, we have uh, about 5,000 Chromebooks, which have become popular over the last 10 years, really over the last six or seven. Mm -hmm. And uh, once we uh, unenroll them, take off the Google lock, then obviously they're inventoried first, then they're cleaned, and then they're tested. We test all the different ports, the screen. And then in this market, Unlike when you go to Walmart or you buy from Amazon, right. everything is is defined. Is it like new? Is it slightly used, oh, uh -huh. heavily used, or is it broken? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so broken items, we really recycle with an R2 recycler, mm -hmm. which is the proper standard in the industry, kind of like the DOD is on the wipe. But when we resell stuff, it's really A, B, or C. And in our market, majority, unless we get new stuff, which we do get new stuff in, we got a couple dozen servers last week from a company that's in the box. It just happens to be a few years old, but mm -hmm. for someone else, it'll be fine. But even when we get new items in the box from companies, we open the box and we verify that there's no data on it. We verify that it has this hard drive or it has this particular RAM, this processor, and then we know exactly what we're selling to the local or U.S. or global secondary market, mm -hmm. which this is what this industry is all about, is uh, reuse, remarketing, and repurpose. Mm -hmm. Because you may have uh, a phone mm -hmm. and you may have an iPhone 10 or 12 or an Android phone, but if the phone is properly cared for, it'll last you five, six, eight years or mm -hmm. so. So right. that's, that's, that's exciting about this industry. We can take products that could be three, five or eight years old and extend the life of the technology of that particular technology. So as a, let's say in, within a company, why would it be important for the business owner or the executive 
to call you up and say, hey, uh, we are, you know, redoing our employees' computer systems that, you know, they need to be upgraded rather than just chunking it in the dumpster? <clears throat> well, obviously, for simple uh, environmental and proper reasons within themselves, mm -hmm. but a, a perfect example is a friend of mine <clears throat> in technology uh, called me a week or so ago and said this school system uh, used to deal with a company out of state and mm -hmm. they don't know what the situation is, but they need help. Yeah, They have XYZ items and they'd like to recuperate some money so they can use that for other things to mm -hmm. repurpose those monies for other maybe technology or school supplies or whatever the school deems necessary. So, you know, we would, how the process would work on that is we would get an inventory of what they have. We would know how many people to send, how much equipment to send. We'd go get everything. We'd home run it back to our 27,000 square foot facility in Manchester, which mm -hmm. is like a, a bedroom community of downtown. Manchester actually is the new Scott's edition. So, yes, give, yes. so give us maybe Had another clients down there. And I like that area. It's nice. Yeah. So yeah. give us maybe another 24 months or maybe 36 and it'll be what maybe Scott's edition was 10 uh -huh. years ago, which I happened to have my other business for nine years in, in Scott's edition until we sold it. Mm -hmm. But right here in Manchester, we home run everything back here. And then we go through our processes. And then anywhere from it could be six weeks, it could be three months, it depends on the process and the flow through our building, then they recuperate monies for what is, uh, you know, sent to us mm -hmm. and so on and what we sell. Um, and I know with the my son, the school that he goes to, it, they have Chromebooks. So, I mean, just think about the school, all the different school systems and the investment, whether it's been donated by a large company like, you know, Microsoft or whatever. Um, yeah, because they're, you know, kids are hard on the computers. <laughs> and I don't know how long the lifespan is of those. Where I mean, a perfect example. Um, Matt, call you, Heather. Call me. Okay, great. Because Dr. Williamson, I don't know if I can get the name exactly <laughs> right. But Heather, it's just a perfect example. I'm invited to go to a show, a, a viewing of this a school system getting rid of 20,000, we'll just say widgets. Mm -hmm. And I already know before I go, because I've been doing this for a few days, mm -hmm. maybe <laughs> a, a few centuries, mm -hmm. but um, I know that X amount will be in B stock, X amount will be in C, and then the other portion will be dominated by D, meaning broken mm -hmm. or unrepairable. And then there might be a few that are in perfect condition, maybe never used, never taken out of the box. Right, right. I think that's amazing that the materials get to be repurposed and then um, either sold or donated to other organizations or countries to help improve their and, and And I'm very glad that you brought that to the forefront. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got an amazing uh, project that I believe it's a three to five year and hopefully longer project that we're working on. And we'll go over that in a minute if it's okay. Yeah, sure. But <clears throat> for instance, right now I work with another vendor that wants to find a home and wants to donate to a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> they have three to five thousand dollars worth of technology. And we're going to facilitate the nonprofit, facilitate uh getting everything up to consumer standards, whether it's upgrading a hard drive, putting more RAM in it cleaning the buttons or the screen or whatever mm -hmm. it's done on the technical side and then making that donation in their behalf and then it can go for i hate to give you the pun but a second life right right they do that with with <laughs> iphones you know you can donate back to the whether it's a verizon store or what and then they um donate it to a other fix it up and make it usable and then right. donate to uh, others that might need it um so what I'm just curious, what got you interested in this area of technology? Um, well, I've had over a dozen companies, actually two before I was 22, because different states and always found technology fascinating. Mm -hmm. You know, you as a young man, you made or a kid, per se, you may start playing with Legos or, you know, matchbox cars or toy trains and stuff. And I don't know, I was able to see technology and handle it as a young age. And I just became fascinated. And I liked when I look at stuff, 
I don't just look at, you know, this beautiful uh, mixing board here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I look at the future and then I try to peel the onion away and look at where we are now. So mm -hmm. I take a look at what, what we have now <clears throat> and where can we go? And I started seeing this in the early, early 2000s, this crazy, <clears throat> you know, reuse, repurpose. Well, we're not doing that. We're putting landfills like on the consumer side, when you go and purchase from Amazon or Target or Walmart, 30 some percent of all returns still, still end up in landfills. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been talking to Amazon to try to, you know, uh, start that uh, cycle going in the opposite direction. So it can go to nonprofits. It can go to folks that are in need. Mm -hmm. And th there's a lot of uh, job opportunities in this business that you would have never have thought of because everybody thinks of new. We're a society <laughs> of, okay, I'm going to go to the store and get brand new. The latest and greatest. It's like people line up or, you know, they used to for the darn latest iPhone. They would lose money on me because unless mine is not working anymore, has got some dysfunction, you know, I, I, I keep it because I'm like, I already know how this works. I don't want to have to be trained. On well, the, the thing is, <laughs> one thing that irritates me, like technology, Heather, uh -huh. is um, kind of scary. Yeah. And everybody, all my friends, whether they're here locally or anywhere around the United States that I visited or went to school, they they all call me on certain things because they think I'm in technology. So I know about everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you probably know more than I do. I just know, you know, how to place it. But, you know, I don't wipe the hard drives. I don't, uh, you know, uh, fix the old VCR or whatever. I, I just I have a different segment of the industry that I work in. But technology in general is scary, is scary. But I will tell you this, kids, you know, six or eight up to 18, they're not scared of anything. No, they're not. And you know, we had a young gentleman working for us that actually bought stuff online. And then he came in and worked for the last three summers. And, you know, this gentleman has built his own MP3 player, has, uh, you know, can uh, figure out how to unlock the Chromebooks or the laptops mm -hmm. that have a lock on it. So the moral to that story is the younger generation is not scared of technology. And we won't put Heather in this, but you know, older folks like me, there we we're, we're a little that. we're 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 a little more scared of what we don't know, right? As opposed to what we know. I know. Well, I have I have a 15 year old son, and if I don't know how to do something on the phone, he's like, "Mom, all you have to do is do this: push this button here, you know, go over here." And I'm like, "Well, that's why I have you to show me how to use this <laughs> if I need help." You're the one who I'm going to go to. Now we're waiting for the day <laughs> that Heather says, oh, such and such. Look, I, I figured this out. Do you know how to use this? And then we have a, a, a aha moment. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yes. The psychology part, he gets aha moments on that. <laughs> <laughs> so when it comes to, you know, what your focus is in the second life, um, you know, you are obviously focused on being good. Is there anything else with regard to being good that, listeners should know about well I, I, i'll i'll um take a step back um my background obviously is technology and uh, a lot to do with sports i mm -hmm. did radio for four years and uh did a lot in the sports community i was with vcu with my first school with the basketball team no not as a seven foot player but <laughs> as a manager but 20 some years ago i got lucky enough to uh, I was at an event and somebody asked me really a strange question. Would you like to work with my son? Mm -hmm. And I, they probably knew me from the community. And that was my first step into being able to understand really, in my view, not everybody's, but my view, what life's all about. And I met a gentleman who has autism, but he has Asperger spectrum mm -hmm. and Asperger spectrum along with autism has a wide array of um, I don't want to say intelligence, but a wider array of, um, 
I'm, I'm having a senior moment of, mm -hmm. of kind of like <laughs> what they're capable yeah, of yeah, yeah, because yeah. we got Elon Musk who has Asperger's and we have, uh, you know, Sp Steven Spielberg who has Asperger's and you may consider them on the genius level. Mm -hmm. Okay. Creative. And it, yeah, I mean, just very uh, creative, very, uh, um, uh, just amazing. Mm -hmm. And then you've got other folks that are maybe not at their level, <clears throat> but within that individual they're amazing people. Mm -hmm. And so for 20 years, I've been working with folks on that spectrum and I've kind of carried it over to my last couple jobs. This, this particular company, Second Life, we work with inner city individuals to give them opportunities to learn a trade, not only to learn a trade, but to have an opportunity, let's say, in at, at a corporation at a mm -hmm. company to see what it's like day to day we also work with uh, a local uh charity that supports autism and we bring in folks that are that are on the spectrum and it, it's incredible people hear the word disability and they think oh can't or won't or yeah. don't well i'll just tell you a lot of the folks that are on the spectrum it's unbelievable and i love just to talk to them and understand, you know, whether they're a, a techie or a geek or a sports nut or, or, or whatever they may be, or very shy and understand what their strengths are. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things that, that we do, you know, at Second Life. And we have um, mm -hmm. a number of individuals that have been with us for, you know, over four years mm -hmm. that, um, you know, either are inner city or have, you know, some type of developmental or cognitive disability. Mm -hmm. And so you mentor them and provide opportunities for personal development. So right. How do, you, how do you do that? Well, I, I always, so we have a, a two tiered office. We have um, a main, a main warehouse is a little bit underground. It's about 24,000 and some square footage. And the upstairs where I'm at, it, you know, the office is in the kitchen. And full disclosure, sometimes I do five miles plus while I'm at work. <clears throat> and I'm always walking around on the phone, mm -hmm. talking to folks, watching them, maybe when they don't know I'm watching them mm -hmm. and seeing what they're doing. <clears throat> and then talking to them, seeing their strengths and weaknesses and try to say, well, okay, such and such, if you do this, maybe we can put you in this area. And maybe if you understand these particular points, then you can go and transfer to over here. Mm -hmm. So I always like to get to know them uh, from their strengths and weaknesses, because let's face it, Heather, yeah. everybody has strengths and weaknesses. I yeah. mean, you can go from the president of the United States, you can go from someone in Congress, you can go to someone that may work in the yard. It doesn't matter what they're doing. It matters, you know, are they doing something that makes them happy? Mm -hmm. And so I try to totally understand, you know, the individual, whether it's a young man, young women, or mm -hmm. whoever it is. I think that's uh, fascinating and, uh, you know, so amazing because not everybody takes that personal touch with their employees and especially with you and the ones that you know might have a disability it's really i mean they're already struggling with something so helping them to make their lives a little easier so they can be fulfilled is <clears throat> and, and, yeah. you know and then feel like they are productive with regard to the industry that you're in and, and working right and and you had made me think about something <clears throat> so when i started working with folks on the spectrum I didn't know anything about that. Mm -hmm. And I just listened, took a step back of what the parents were telling me of, of meeting the individual of some of the things that the individual was not uh, good at, or just in general, somebody that has autism, the social aspect is the biggest weakness with somebody right. that has autism. Right. And I just used common sense, no, no book, no um, mentoring from somebody else, common mm -hmm. sense to help break them of their weaknesses or enhance their weaknesses to make them strengths. Mm -hmm. And there was for the first individual about a dozen and um, eight or nine after a year or so we, we, we accomplished mm -hmm. and we still work on the other ones. Mm -hmm. So if somebody has a business that's listening today, um, how would they be able to 
find that resource that you found with regard to uh, getting additional help with somebody who might be on the spectrum? Sure. Well, there's a, a great organization called DARS mm -hmm. in, in Richmond around the state and similar agencies around the United States. There are a lot of agencies. And DARS uh, stands for? <clears throat> developmental. Uh, it, it's working with folks that are have disabilities. Disability. I don't know what the acronym stands for and so on. I haven't put that to memory because as you get older, you lose a few brain cells and I don't want to say the wrong thing. <laughs> well, not you get older. I'm speaking of myself. <clears throat> but there's a lot of different organizations out there, whether it's uh, the Autism Society, whether it's uh, SOAR 365, whether it may be some of the agencies that support the mm -hmm. young men and women. And I use that loosely, whether somebody is 16, 17, or in their 50s, I'm still calling them young men and women, because mm -hmm. I, I believe that's what everybody is. And uh, yes, Heather, I call <laughs> myself still young. <clears throat> but you, you hit on something that I'd also, if I may, yeah. take the forefront <clears throat> to talk about. Um, one thing <clears throat> that I've been really lucky in my career and so on <clears throat> is to have many different interests and many, I'm, I kind of developed many different opportunities for myself. I mm -hmm. developed a, <clears throat> to get a scholarship at my first school by just, you know, doing certain things and being into sports and so on and <clears throat> developed uh, the ability to uh, get involved with uh, uh, the other side of sports with the radio side by just, you know, listening and talking to people. <clears throat> and um, again, the 20 years ago when I was lucky enough and it happened to be at a sporting event, someone to came, come up to me and ask, you know, can you work with uh, mm -hmm. my son? <clears throat> and I didn't know how to react to that. <clears throat> and now I, I have a whole process and a plan put together and we have corporations within the Richmond area that are participating. And um, I'll, I'll just kind of read a little bit about <clears throat> this and then mm -hmm. I'll, I'll let you ask me questions. But what we have is an environmental and a financially uh, responsible and socially responsible partnership mm -hmm. <laughs> with corporations um, around Richmond and around the state and nonprofits, <laughs> very diverse nonprofits. We mm -hmm. have some nonprofits that help folks with on the spectrum and with the cognitive disabilities. We have a nonprofit that's very dear to my heart. I've been working with them for almost 15 years by the name of Caritas, yeah, and uh -huh. they help folks that um, are either homeless or uh, have addiction to alcohol or drugs mm -hmm. and they're, they're just phenomenal folks and I'm very lucky to be associated with them and then we're helping other nonprofits to get proper food into the kitchens and the access to individuals as mm -hmm. well and so our program basically is we work with corporations and either they sell us their technology or they give us their technology and then we split 50% of the technology proceeds with the nonprofits wow. after we take out our expenses. Right, that's amazing. And what a huge gift for them. I mean, just in the Richmond MSA, my, my stats are over $75 million mm -hmm. are deemed EOL every year. So mm -hmm. there's plenty of growth and plenty of opportunity for companies to get on board and to help the less fortunate. And this is great because Every big corporation, whether you're Capital One, Bank of America, or you know a, a smaller bank or so on, is giving certain dollars right. to the nonprofits. Well, yeah. they, they have, have to for their tax purposes. That's that's great. Mm -hmm. We're asking, let us buy or donate your technology, and let us give tens of thousands of dollars to a basket of nonprofits. Mm -hmm. Right. So not just one has been a thing, but you're able to spread that opportunity around to every to a lot of people. And and I just want to say everything that we do would not even be possible with all the great people that work at the company, all the great people that help us and all the ambassadors out there mm -hmm. for what we do. And that's really what's the exciting part it's almost like having a baby or having a a new pet or whatever you get to take what we're doing from ground zero and and see the fruits of the labor when it's done and what great 
good can be done at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So if there's a company out there listening and they're thinking about, this would be a great idea for our company. How would they get in touch with you? <laughs> well, Second Life um, Inc.com is on the internet mm -hmm. and my we, you can uh, reach me by info at secondlifeinc.com or my first name, Mike at secondlifeinc.com. And um, whether you're small with 10 employees, five employees, or you have 50,000 employees, mm -hmm. you know, we work with all size companies. The size doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of other things that we can help companies with. We do a lot of repair of the technology. Uh, we also sell technology to companies that are around Richmond so they don't have to spend 1200 on a laptop. They can spend two or 300 mm -hmm. and still get five to seven years use out of it. Which is very important because I know with my laptop, I think I spent about what, $1,200 on it. <laughs> and uh, it's lasted me for right, quite a few years, but I was like, ah, oh, that, that's a lot of money. A yeah, of so money. there's a lot of ways that you can stretch your dollar. And one of the big ways is, is helping local companies buying secondhand and just supporting local. Mm -hmm. um, so if you were going to give a piece of advice to a business owner or an executive in a company, what would that be? Well, you have to look at the big picture. Obviously you have your family, your employees and such, but at the end of the day, everybody is going to be buried six feet under. <clears throat> and it doesn't matter if you have $10, $100,000, $1 or a million <clears throat> in the bank. What matters is that you you every minute, every hour, every day, you live it like it's your last. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and what really matters in life is making sure <clears throat> that you treat others like you want to be treated and make sure you give back. Um, because whether you believe in God or don't believe in God or or some higher being, that is proven in life to be the best way to live mm -hmm. is to treat others like you want to be treated and to give back and to help folks that need an opportunity. Mm -hmm. I, I totally agree with you 100 <laughs> percent. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do. We try to give back as well. And I do on this show. Um, and I think it's really important because there's others that could really need assistance or just like a, just a little bit of help, you know, it doesn't have sometimes to you need like you, you need a push. Yeah. You, you need a little bit of direction. And that is what I find is like very important. And in 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 life, too, if somebody's looking, hey, what direction do I want to go? Never be afraid to ask somebody a question. Never be afraid to ask for the sale. And something I failed to mention because of my age, again, getting a little older, is the the also the comp the the, the one of the end products. I have a good friend from 39 years ago, mm -hmm. which was with the VCU basketball team. I know I'm dating myself. How do you make me 39 when I know somebody 39 years? Don't well, ask me. I'm a moderate, so we're good. <laughs> so um he he's going to be working with the governor and I'm also helping and they're going to uh, start something called midnight basketball shoot for the stars. Oh, nice. And that's my dear friend, Calvin Duncan, who has a, a number of nonprofits, but the nonprofit we're going to be working with is Calvin Duncan life Academy. Mm -hmm. And we're first going to go into Petersburg, but part of what these companies are helping us with, will go to fund that program. And it's amazing because I have a part in it as well. Plus I love sports. Plus I love helping. Uh, Calvin is an amazing individual as far as, you know, being able to change people's lives for the mm -hmm. better. And they're going to be mentoring. There's going to be uh, basketball to keep folks off the street. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a tremendous drug, uh, gun and violent crime issue around the United States. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to have a part where, corporations will help show these individuals opportunities that lie to them in the corporate America platform. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very, very exciting opportunity. And I can't tell you how much I'm looking forward to it. It's the next great challenge. Awesome. That sounds amazing. Um, and I really thank you, Michael, for being on the show today. 
And if you want to get to learn more about what Mike is doing, just uh, email him at Mike at second, that's a two, secondlifeinc.com. So that's going to do it for us today. Thank you for listening to Talking Leadership with Dr. Heather, your leadership doc on ESPN 106.1 FM. And I will talk to you again next week. Bye.